Welcome back to Retro Axis. In this continuing series on the Atari VCS, we're going to open the case and see what this thing looks like on the inside. Additionally, I'll be pointing out as I do so how you can upgrade the RAM and potentially the storage. Let's get started. So this is the first time I've actually opened up uh, an Atari VCS. I have not done so before, so I'm actually going to figure this out. Uh, I don't imagine it's too difficult. I don't see any screws on the exterior, but I suspect they may be hidden underneath uh, these rubber feet. So we'll pop these off and have a look there. Uh, it may be simpler than that. Maybe there's just a way to slide something off. Um, it doesn't seem like that's the case, but uh, we're going to find out. So. Um, I'm going to begin here. I've got a set of tools. Uh, worst case scenario, I suppose we could bash it, but probably not going to do that. But I do have some screwdrivers, uh, some other tools in here, and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing opened up. All right, so here's the Atari VCS case. I'm going to go ahead and pull my USB receiver for my keyboard out first. And just looking at this first, you know, I originally thought maybe there was some screws underneath here, and it's possible that there are. But I think what I'm going to do first is if I take a look at the rear, I'm going to look inside these vents and I can see what appears to be, looks like some heat shielding. Um, I'm thinking maybe one of these edges might pop off. So this one doesn't really wiggle. It's pretty, pretty solid, this face plate. Let's try the rear plate. It actually may. Oh, there you go. There's something. It's snapping off. So I'm going to keep prying at it. There we go. Look at that. All right. So the rear face plate has been removed. It might be interesting if somebody was going to make some mods. Maybe they could like 3D print different colors or do some different stuff with these. That might be kind of a neat idea. Uh, but see, at first glance, you know, you can see the internals here. There's not much really. These are just the ports in the back, but you can actually get a little bit of a look inside. See, I can actually see, yeah, and you know, in fact, I can see if you look, here's my screwdriver to point to you. If you see this here, this is a riser for a screw, which lines up almost perfectly with this foot. And I can see through to the other side, it looks like each of these will have a screw. So let's pop off one of these rubber feet and see if there's a screw below it. In fact, it just pulls out. You don't even have to pull it out of the way. You just lift and there's like a little bitty cover. looks like covering that. So you just kind of pull off this little boot. It's like perfectly molded. That's actually a nice design. You see the back of it's glued. So you don't want to pull the whole thing off because it is glue. You'll actually have a, probably a hard time getting it back on, but it was designed to just pop right out. So that's clearly something that they intended when they built this, that these little boots would come right out. So with that, uh, probably let's see how big of a, it's a Phillips head screw, or it's actually not. It's a, looks like a star pattern. Let's see if I can find the right T10. It feels like it's going to be a T10. So if you're Trying to crack the case open, you will need a T10 Torx, which if you're not familiar with that particular type, you can see the shape here. These are called Torx screws. I'm going to go ahead and undo all four. So I'm just going to run my fingers along this label, see if there's any hidden screws under there. I don't find any there, um, but I should be able to lift. Okay. I was able to lift. Okay. All right. Now I want to be real careful. I just noticed this. When I open this, I don't know if you can see here, these wires, this is the Wi-Fi antenna. It looks like it's been uh, glued to the top of the lid. And so you want to be real careful. You don't, pull this case off too quickly and break those. So be very careful if you're going inside uh, of here. In fact, it's, it's interesting. Here's the chip. This is a Realtek 
uh, chip for the actual uh, Wi-Fi. And you can see that the, the wi Wi-Fi's MAC address also printed on this particular uh, chip. It's almost like this is upgradable. Uh, I'll zoom in here and, and show you what I'm talking about. So if you look here, you can see this is the actual chip. And you can see how it looks like it's in some sort of slot where it could be updated. Here we see a fan with a shroud. It's got a nice, uh, you know, air baffle. This is the light for the front end. So when that logo lights up, this is the, uh, I guess the diffuser that takes the light up to the front of the panel from the main board. There's a small little LED underneath there. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to take off this baffle. And very carefully, in fact, because I do not want to break this Wi-Fi antenna. I'm almost tempted to remove the Wi-Fi chip. In fact, I may do that. I'm gonna pull the Wi-Fi chip. All right, this will now let me move a little bit easier by taking that off. All right, so I've got the top case uh, pulled off. The front and rear bezels are here. And I'm gonna begin by removing this heat shield so we can see what's underneath it. So we'll take off this top heat shield. These look like these little printed things on the circuit board. That's kind of cool. You got the little Space Invader guys here on the circuit board printed out. See it from the other angle. And here I'll zoom in. You can see the little Space Invader guys. It's like a little scene going on here <laughs> along this chip, along this board. That's kind of a nice little hidden nugget. Like there's another one down here. This looks like asteroids down here. You can see that right there. That's a nice touch on the inside, something you wouldn't normally see. So I think what I wanna do next is actually pull this board out of the bottom part of the case. Um, you know, I can see here that there's only a few places where it might be plugged, uh, screwed in, screwed down. Um, I believe this is one right here. So I'm gonna pull this screw. That was one. And there's another one, looks like here, inside this fan air baffle. So I'm going to remove this one. And here we go. I'm being really careful here not to, there is another board. It looks like there's another board below this. So what I'm gonna do is flip it upside down. And have a look in here. All right, so there's two ribbon cables that go to other things down here that says USB so that must be the USB controller oh you know what that's for the rear USB ports that's what I'm looking at so I'll show you what I'm looking at so if you look inside of there you can see attached to the bottom of the case those are the front USB ports so there's these little bitty secondary boards that are connected up via this ribbon cable along the side that connect the front USB ports to the main board so that's what that is. That's what I'm looking at. So there's really no need to remove that, except if I wanna to get to the underbody. So I am gonna go ahead and disconnect these two USB ribbon cables. There it is.
Okay, I found another hidden screw underneath this light. There's another screw holding down this board. So I'm going to remove this light, which is made of rubber, which is interesting. It's a, it's like a squishy rubber. We'll keep that screw. Actually, it has little plastic washers on it, like spacers. We'll keep that all together. And let's remove this other main board screw right here. Okay. And now we have access to the bottom of the board. All right, so now we can see the bottom of the main board. And here we can see the actual RAM chips. So you can see they have these uh, Kingston chips here. So here we can see the RAM chips. Now this thing has, uh, as you know, eight gigs of RAM. So these are each a four gig uh, chip each. Pull one of these out and see. You can see that. So these are indeed upgradable. So this is obviously the back, so it's quite a bit of work to get in here and upgrade the RAM. So this isn't as straightforward as, you know, a, a traditional PC where you just crack the case and go, or a laptop where they make the uh, ports accessible for you to do the upgrade easily. All right, so that is the inside of the Atari VCS. So here's your RAM upgrade slot. And I believe on the front side is where you would put the additional hard drive. In fact, I'm almost willing to bet it's, it's, it's right here in this slot. The other, the other storage must be built into the main board somewhere. So um, the other storage that's here is, is on ship. Okay, so we've taken apart the VCS. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it back together. Okay, so uh, just a quick lesson learned as I was uh, going back and reassembling this, uh, I had a lot of trouble getting this thing back together. And so what I found out is if you wanna remove these ribbon cables, you simply just lift up on this black thing. You lift it up, instead of pulling it out, you lift it up and it slides right out, super easy. And then when you're ready, you just push it right back down. I think I inadvertently broke this one. So um, I may try to go back and fix it, but I may end up with a system with a bad, <laughs> one bad USB port. So, um, you know, accidents happen, but hey, we're learning. So um, just a tip. So here we are reassembled for the most part. Uh, this is where the additional storage device would go. You would simply drop it in here uh, and it should secure itself relatively easy. Um, you know, so I think you could probably update that without a whole lot of hassle. But if you wanted to upgrade the memory, you would have to do a lot more, like removing all these screws and get to the bottom of the console. Um, that, those, that memory was about, uh, you know, somewhere about right here uh, in, on the board, almost center of the board. Um, but there's no access panel or anything else like that. That might have been kind of a nice thought if they'd have put an access panel here to access it, kind of like a laptop gives you that uh, nice access panel, um, but they certainly didn't design that in, um, probably because majority of people may not be updating these or upgrading these. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and reattach the front, uh, the top case with the um, front mounted antenna and we'll put it back together. So one thing of note, um, ooh, and I did it. I ended up breaking it. Let's have a look. So if you see what happened, the antenna separated from the actual um, board. I'm gonna see if I can reattach that. Looks like it just would pop on there pretty easily. All right, so it did pop on there. It's almost like a little nine volt battery connector, but it is not easy to get back on there. So if you are 
going to be taking apart your VCS, I would suggest being very careful with things, particularly this <laughs> wireless part. All right, well that sucked. Um, all right, so that little stupid antenna keeps popping off, so do be very careful. What I was trying to avoid was pinching it with the screw, and as I was trying to move it, it kept popping off, but I finally got it seated, and now I'm gonna go ahead very carefully. You notice I've got the case just barely draped over this thing so that antenna wire doesn't pop off again, but that was, that was a little tricky. All right, so note, I've got the case. I'm gonna start lining it up. I'm noticing here that the light, the little light rubber thing in the front is not quite there. I'm gonna see if I need to pull it forward. There we go. So that's good. All right, and that is, that is it. So let's go and put the screws back in the bottom. All right, back together. Let's go ahead and set it up and see if it boots. And action. All right, so I've got the Atari off my bench. Let's go ahead and plug it back in. We'll start with the joystick, HDMI, Ethernet, and power. And I've got my USB keyboard and mouse. I'm going to plug that here into this USB port. This was the one that I disconnected, so I'll make sure it still works. And let's go ahead and power it on. Fan's going. All right. No problem. Well, we're back in business, up and running. So, you know, what we learned in this episode is we learned uh, how difficult it is to access the inside of the, of the VCS. Relatively painless to pop off that rear piece, but that doesn't do you a whole lot. Uh, to get to the actual main board to do any sort of upgrades, you will need to go ahead and uh, take those four screws that were underneath those feet at the bottom in order to do that. So uh, I would say that upgrading the, the, uh, the, the storage would be relatively straightforward. However, I think that when you get to updating the, um, the RAM, it's a little bit more in, in, uh, involved. You saw me struggle with some of the connectors. I did learn a little bit more about those, and hopefully these tips will help you if you decide to up grade your VCS. So that's it for this episode of Retroactus. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, like, and share this video with others so that they can also appreciate this uh, new console and hopefully get some value out of it. Thanks a lot. See you next time on Retroaxis.